Hello everyone, this is Lab 1 for Physics 20 to 11. My name is Shireen Farouk. The purpose of this lab was to observe an object moving at a constant velocity on a straight path and compare position versus time data from an experimental condition and a computational model. The results of this lab found that there was a strong correlation between the experimental condition and computational model demonstrating constant velocity on a singular axis. The major principle involved in this lab is Newton's second law. Newton's second law is unique because it serves as a bridge to connect properties of the system to interactions with the surroundings. This allows us to predict motion and velocity in the future. The first equation below is derived from the momentum principle and predicts future velocity. The second equation is the position update equation and determines the future position of the object. Newton's first law also plays a minor role in this experiment. Newton's first law states that an object in motion stays in motion and an object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. The experimental setup was as follows. The mass of the basketball was found to be 0.623 kilograms and the length of the basketball was used as the reference length. The axis was oriented so the positive x direction faced to the right. The average velocity was calculated by taking the change in position over the change in time. The position update equation requires the average velocity, but since there was no net force acting on the object, the final velocity was equal to the initial velocity, and so the average velocity was just vi. This value is found to be 1.3 meters per second. The initial position was found by using the position information from the data analysis conducted in the tracker application. This is the video of the experimental condition. The data was measured in the tracker application. A point was placed in each frame of the video for the duration of the object at a constant velocity. The position versus time graph was plotted in the top right corner and in the bottom right corner the values for each uh, point were put into a table. The Python code for the computational model was adjusted slightly to reflect the experimental condition. The mass of the ball was changed along with the initial position and initial velocity vectors. The time step was changed to 0.01 seconds because a small time step is good for accurate data collection. The net force vector was zero and Newton's second law was used to calculate the velocity of the ball. The position update formula was used to calculate the ball's final position as seen in the last box. Here's what the computational model looks like when it's run. The position versus time graph comparing the computational model and the experimental condition is shown here. As you can see, the beginning and end of the graph lines up quite well, but as pointed out by the arrow, the middle of the graph demonstrates a change in velocity for the experimental condition. This error could be caused by the uneven pavement that may have led to a change in velocity. The pavement was sloped downhill, which would lead to an increase in velocity which is demonstrated by the fact that the blue line is slightly above the red line in the graph. To answer the first question, if the axis was flipped so that the ball was traveling in the negative x direction, the slope would be in the negative direction and would point to the bottom right as demonstrated by the green arrow. This would also make the velocity negative. To answer the second question, uh, it's not possible to say how many forces are acting on the object. Newton's second law of motion doesn't account for the number of individual forces acting on an object. It only accounts for the total net force on the object in order to calculate the final velocity. Thank you very much.